everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Nina. I help people to declutter their minds and their homes using practical applications of psychology. And today's video is by request. We are going to be talking about something that is a struggle for many, many people, which is how to clean up and declutter with ADHD or ADHD symptoms. Now this video is for educational purposes only and not meant to substitute a diagnosis or a treatment plan. These are things that must come from your physician or a mental health professional. However, I want to point out that even if you do not have an ADHD diagnosis, it's still possible to struggle with some of these symptoms, which is something that I myself can definitely relate to. But diagnosis or not, today's video is designed to help us gain a deeper understanding of how and why clutter can be tied to this condition and offer solutions and strategies to help us really start to tackle this issue. So starting at the beginning, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD can affect individuals in many different ways, but many people with this condition find it hard to organize, to concentrate, to complete projects, to finish work on time, to follow directions, or to remember some information. They may struggle with chronic boredom, anxiety, impulsiveness, procrastination, and low motivation. And we can just look at this list and clearly see how each and every one of these symptoms could interfere with cleaning and decluttering. And by the sheer amount of comments and emails I get about this topic, it's obvious that this is something that many, many people find incredibly challenging. In fact, I've had many people say that they have completely given up or that they have simply accepted the fact that clutter is part of the ADHD equation. However, just like anything else that could be seen as maybe an obstacle, it does not have to be a barrier. We just have to learn how to work with our own strengths and kind of work around the aspects of cleaning and decluttering that we find a little bit more challenging. And today we're going to talk about many strategies that we can use to do exactly that. So let's start by looking at the research and the connection. So one of the issues with individuals with ADHD is that they often leave things out because they feel like it can help compensate for an unreliable memory. We can feel like the visual cues help us to remember what we need to get done. We can also get bored with decluttering projects. So we can start working on something and then get halfway through, lose interest and abandon it forever, making the space even more messy than when we initially started. We can also simply feel completely overwhelmed by the mess and clutter and therefore endlessly procrastinate trying to address it. Something else that can happen, and this happens to me all the time, is that we can start to declutter and then we stumble across something that we've been missing or something that we find interesting. And then we get so distracted that the cleaning and the decluttering go completely out the window. Other times we can have great intentions to clean or to perform a task, but we simply forget about it and it never gets done. And other times we can actually get the space cleaned up. However, we find it way too challenging to maintain and really lack the motivation to do what's necessary to continuously keep it neat and tidy. And even if any or all of these things seem to apply to your life, please do not despair because as promised, today we're going to be talking about some of the the most effective solutions that have been suggested by other people who struggle with ADHD symptoms for cleaning and decluttering. These are techniques that they themselves have found very helpful. And even though everyone is a little bit different, you can listen to this list and choose the strategies and techniques that you think will be the most beneficial for you personally. Number one is to use bins without lids. And if that does not sound appealing to you, you can have a pretty bin or even a fancy container, but I definitely suggest not having a top on it because for most of us, when we are decluttering, it is unlikely we're going to take the time to take the bin out, remove the lid, put everything in, organize it, put the lid back on, and then stick it where it's supposed to go. We have a much higher chance of actually keeping things where they belong if all we have to do is simply toss the item in there. People with ADHD 
often find it very helpful to cut out any unnecessary or extra steps. We need to make it as simple and easy as possible. And it is much more likely that we're going to develop the new habit of putting things where they belong if it is easy to do. So we don't want to think about trying to aim for perfection. We just want to think about aiming for progress. The second thing we can do is to clean up in short spurts. And by short, I'm really only talking about like 10 or 15 minutes a day. And it's amazing how much we can actually get accomplished during that time. The point here is that we really don't want to overwhelm ourselves because we will tend to lose motivation and lose focus and likely give up on cleaning and decluttering altogether. Something else that is helpful is to have a plan for the available time that we have and to really commit to only cleaning and decluttering what we set out to do that day. Now, some people find that having an actual cleaning schedule for the week can be helpful for them and give them direction, while other people do not feel that that's realistic or they don't like to be kind of pinned down to something. And that's fine. If that's the case for you, then just day to day decide what needs to get done. But what you can do is have a running list of things that you would like to accomplish. So as you notice things need to be put away or repaired or whatever, you can make a list of it, make a note of it, and stick it on the fridge or stick it on your phone so you always have kind of an idea of the things that you want to get to. Number three is to deal with dishes and mail daily. And I say this because these two things can get out of hand very, very quickly and also really contribute to the sense of chaos in our life. They can make us feel very, very overwhelmed. So if we are just going to work on changing one aspect of our routine or adopting one new habit, this is the habit to adopt, making sure that every single day we have a clean sink and making sure that the second the mail comes in, we go through it, we throw away the trash and we put away what is important. Believe it or not, these two simple things can give us a true sense of control in our life. It helps us to feel like we are moving forward. It also helps helps us to feel that we are organized and gives us that inspiration to keep moving in the same direction. Number four is to label every box or container or we can simply use clear bins. Now, why is this important? Well, if you are anything like me, you have no idea what you put in all the different boxes and bins. And when you need something, you end up having to take out like, you know, 20 or 30 bins and going through them and leaving the mess everywhere and never actually putting anything back. Whereas if we had everything labeled and we could simply read the side and figure out immediately where things actually are, we would never have to go through any of this. So to fix this, we can start a new habit of whenever we are putting things away to, you know, just go ahead and label right away and just taking an afternoon and inviting maybe some friends over and going through all these bins and boxes and doing a little inventory and then just writing on the side what is actually in these boxes so that, you know, we never have to go through the stress of trying to desperately find something and not having any success. Number five is to have a a junk drawer or bin in every single room. Even people without ADHD really need a place to put all the stuff that don't currently have a designated home. And I know they say that everything in your house should have a place, but realistically, all kinds of things are flowing into the household and we may not have the time to find a permanent place for these things. So at least if we have a general area where these things go, we can just simply go to that place when we are looking for them. Whereas if we are in the habit, as many of us are, of just you know leaving these things wherever, we never know where to find them. So just stick them in a junk drawer or stick them in a junk bin. And when you get the time, find a place for all these things to permanently live. Number six is to immediately create designated areas for our most important items. And this is really one of the very first things that we should be doing because there are many things that are extremely necessary for us or very, very valuable that we don't have a great idea idea of where we can find a lot of the time. So we need to perform an assessment. What are these things that need to have an immediate home? What can we not afford to lose? Maybe it's our keys, our birth certificate, bills, schoolwork papers for our children, whatever it is. But the things that we are worried about losing or forgetting really do need to have a permanent home. So these are the things that we want to address right away. And this is something that we don't really need to overthink. So if we notice 
notice that we always tend to put an item in a general area, that's probably a good idea to make it the permanent home for that object. It's also important that we don't just come up with a spot, but we also come up with some sort of container for that item. So it's not enough to say that my keys are going to always live on this shelf. We wanna make sure that that shelf has a little bowl or a little box or something. It doesn't need a top like we talked about, but for it to always be contained in. Number seven is to remove trash and obvious clutter on a regular basis. And I think so many times we don't even notice how much trash we actually have because we just see past it or we don't really think of it as trash. We're so used to it just kind of being there, but maybe we have a whole stack of Amazon boxes or food packaging or whatever it is. If we can get into the habit of noticing this stuff, identifying it, and then taking care of it, the same thing with obvious clutter, the things that we know we don't want or need, you know, addressing it right away and getting it out of the house, we're going to see that we have so much much more space. It can get us so excited and motivated to continue on with the decluttering and cleaning process because we see all these nice clean spaces and these clear areas and we want to create more of them. So it's a simple thing, but it can actually be very effective and helpful. Number eight is to stop putting clothes on the floor or other surfaces. Now, struggling with this issue is one of the things that kept my own house from being clean or organized in the past. I had clothes all over the place. And I know a lot of times we want to develop the habit of diligently putting the clothes away the second they are folded. But for many of us, that is a struggle and something that we are going to eventually work towards. So in the meantime, what we can do is simply have a bunch of bins. And no, it's not going to look like a you know Pinterest bedroom, but it is much better to actually know where things are and to have things somewhat organized in general areas than to have no idea what's even clean or dirty and end up, you know, washing clean clothes again because we really can't tell the difference or not being able to find things. At least if we have a bin for dirty clothes, if we have a bin for clothes we want to wear again and a bin for clothes that we do eventually want to put away, we at least know where things are. So it is a step in the right direction. Number nine is to try to make it fun. Individuals with ADHD despise doing things that are boring and repetitive. So it is beneficial to do things that we enjoy at the same time. And it's also going to increase the likelihood of actually completing that task. Now I'm a huge fan of music. So I like to put my earbuds in and listen to my favorite songs. I also like to listen to podcasts. Many people say that they like to listen to cleaning and decluttering videos that they find that very inspiring and other people find it helpful to actually invite people over, not necessarily to help them clean or declutter, but to keep them company, to keep them laughing. You can also call a friend and talk to them on speakerphone. Basically, all we're trying to do here is make the process more fun and to kind of distract ourselves a little bit so we keep on going. And number 10 is to stop comparing yourself to others. I have found that many people simply give up because they can't get their home to look like the videos they watch or their family's home or their friend's home. They get very frustrated and they get demotivated and they eventually lose interest in trying. But we have to remember that our journey is our own and our reality is our own. And also not everything is as it appears. Even people who appear to have a perfectly tidy home may actually be struggling with this area. Maybe on social media, they're just showing this very small section of their house that happens to be clean. In reality, this is something that a lot of people have difficulty with, but it's also something that can have a lot of negative consequences. So it is something that we want to spend time addressing, but we have to be realistic. We have to be self understanding. We can't get angry at ourselves that some regimen that works for other people doesn't work for us. I mean, great. It works for them, but we need to see what is effective in our life. So if we try something and it's not really working, instead of giving up, we just need to pivot. We need to keep looking for the system that is effective for us. What many people find helpful is to simply simplify things and to make a lot of these strategies a lot more general instead of trying to hyper-organize every last 
thing. We have to remember that what we're working towards is making our home more functional for us specifically, and also making it feel a lot more like a sanctuary instead of feeling so chaotic all the time. So we need to start small so we don't get overwhelmed and we need to, you know, focus on our priorities. And when we do this, we're going to start to find the little techniques and the little strategies that start to work for us. And that's going to give us a lot of momentum because we're going to see that progress. So it's so important that we don't get hung up on what we think our decluttering journey should look like or what our home should look like. It shouldn't look like anything. It should be functional. It should be something that works for us personally. And that's all that matters. So it's so important that we are really honoring our individuality at this time and really starting to identify our strengths and to also practice a lot of self-love and self-understanding in the process because it can feel intimidating to change our habits or start to address things that have made us uncomfortable in the past. But believe me, it is absolutely possible. So that being said, I truly hope that today's video was helpful to you. If it was, please like it, share it, definitely become a subscriber if you are not one already. We absolutely want you to stay connected. I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today, and I hope the rest of your day is extraordinary.